Hello everyone and welcome to the second day of the aim chess rapid knockout. We are in the finals um, uh, still and it is Yang Shishtov Duda versus Shahriar Mamedyarov. Uh, Duda defeated uh, Mamedyarov in the first day of their match. He uh, won two games, two games were drawn and now Mamedyarov needs to uh, strike back in order to force tie breaks. And this game is absolutely unbelievable. As usual when Mamedyarov is involved usually you have some 20 moves of known theory and then something just happens. Something explodes uh, and then we all... Yeah, enjoy that so let's see what happened here Duda has the white pieces and he opens with knight to f3 Dareti is on the board we have pawn to d5 d4 uh, knight to f6 and now pawn to c4 going for the uh, well offering the gambited pawn and now d captures on c4 Mamedyarov accepts the queen gambit we have pawn to e3 going after the the c4 uh, pawn and now pawn to e6 we have bishop captures on c4 and pawn to c5 so the classical defense nothing uh, uh, new being played here we have castles pawn to a6 preparing b5 pawn to b3 and pawn to b5 bishop back to e2 bishop to b7 and now bishop to b2 again all been played before, knight b to d7, pawn to a4, challenging the uh, structure on the queen side, pawn to b4, and now knight b to d2. We have bishop to e7, and rook to c1. We have rook to c8, and now knight to c4 by Duda. Beautiful uh, square for this knight. We have castles, and now knight f to e5. Uh, C captures on d4, knight captures on d7, knight captures on d7, and bishop captures on d4. Now we have bishop to d5, uh, and now uh, there is a game where queen to d2 was played, also pawn to a5 is a known move, but here we have queen to d3, and it is now as of move 17 that we have a completely new game. So what's the idea behind queen to d3, and why is um, uh, Yang Shishtov inviting knight to c5 to go after the queen? Well, he wants to remaneuver the queen to b1, one, so he can shift this rook to d1 and align it with the black queen on d8. So let's see what happens here. Knight to c5 by Shahriar, queen back to b1. Also, you have to defend your b3 pawn. And now knight to e4. So Shahriar um, uh, immensely improves the position of his knight, but now rook f to d1. And this already looks uh, uh, very unpleasant for black, so you have to be very careful uh, about what you do here. And here, uh, bishop to f6 by Mamedyarov. And this is not the most precise way to deal with this position uh, or you know maybe it is if you're a human if you're an engine then you know probably not uh, but feel free to pause the video here and try to find the uh, the uh, well the the tiniest way uh, to take advantage of the position while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, positional uh, brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to f3. And now black has all sorts of problems uh, because now the knight on e4 is hanging. So what can you do here? Uh, let's explore just some of the options. Let's say you play bishop captures on d4 first. You want to uh, take some pressure off the board. Then bishop captures on e4. And now your bishop is hanging and also the h7 pawn is hanging. So if you capture on e4 then just queen captures on e4 and next you're going to lose the bishop and the game so uh, obviously that's not going to work uh, probably best for black is to play knight to g5 which just gives uh, white a long-term positional advantage uh, through a force line of bishop captures on d5 e captures on d5 and now a nice bishop captures on f6 where if you capture with the queen you just give up the d5 pawn for nothing so you're going to have to mess up your pawn structure and now okay white just goes back knight to d2 and now black's king side is ruined and white will play against this um, uh, position. Uh, what happened in the game is that Mamedyarov played knight to c3, he attacked the queen and the rook, but this is now uh, winning for Duda and it's not um, uh, hard to see why or it's not easy to find why it's winning because obviously you're not going to give up any material, bishop captures on c3, b captures on c3 and now pawn to e4 and Duda has just won a bishop. Or so you would think, uh, because Mamedyarov uh, did plan on this and he plays bishop captures on c4. So Duda does not get the bishop, he gets the queen, but Mamedyarov will get uh, a bishop and a rook in return. So rook captures on d8, rook cap f captures on d8, and now b captures on c4. So grabbing the bishop as well. And now the situation is queen, rook, and bishop versus uh, rook, rook, and bishop. So now uh, Mamedyarov only has a rook for a queen, but what what, uh, another thing 
he does have is a protected pass pawn on c3. So can he actually do something with this position? Uh, you know, everything you know about chess should tell you that no, a queen is just too powerful of a piece. But okay, rook to b8 attacks the white queen. We have queen to a1. And this is by far the best uh, square for the queen. If you go somewhere like uh, queen to a2, then you allow rook to d2 to come with tempo. So queen to a1, and now comes rook to b2. Uh, of course, uh, if uh, if you allow uh, rook captures on c3 might even be an option in some lines because you would gladly give up the rook for pawn and bishop just, uh, you know, uh, take care of uh, any and all counterplay black might have. So rook to b2, of course, uh, Mamidar will not allow this. And now uh, the position is incredibly intense. And what Duda should do is just start pushing his pass pawn as one usually should. Uh, but he played e5 and uh, everyone was confused uh, when Duda played this okay you you free up your your bishop's diagonal but do, do you even need it okay at some point you will need it to cover the c6 square maybe uh, but uh, it just uh, allows Mamidyarov uh, uh, a whole lot more than he had so bishop captures on e5 now it's very hard to take care of the back rank issues something like h3 h4 is no longer as great as the bishop will now cover the h3 h2 square and g3 then the rooks come to the second rank uh, will also be an issue so, okay, queen to a3 by Duda, uh, and now we have pawn to g6 by Mamidyarov. Uh, he also has to take care of some back rank issues. You could also play something like c2, and it's it's in fact a great move, but uh, yeah, Mamidyarov feels that he can do even better. If c2, then g3, and if rook to b1, then what do you play? King g2. And now after bishop to b2, going after the queen and the rook, Queen to b3 or a2, doesn't really matter, you're going to capture the c2 pawn. You give up the rook, queen captures on c2, and now, okay, you have to defend your rook, so you're either going to move it or play something like rook, b, uh, rook d to b8, but now white starts pushing. And yes, you won material, but this pawn is now looking um, uh, ve uh, very strong. So instead, Mamidara plays g6, he gives Duda uh, the uh, opportunity, if you will, to make a mistake, uh, and Duda plays g3. Uh, here, uh, the, the position is still very, very good for Duda. He, uh, he needs to find king to f1. And it looks like such a weird move. Why would you go closer to black's pieces? He has a rook, bishop, the other rook, and a pass pawn here. Point is that after c2, there's king e2. And now you don't have to worry about the rook on the second rank. You don't have to worry about rook to d2. You're on a light square. You don't have to worry about the bishop. And especially, you don't have to worry about rook to b1 because the rook is no longer pinned by the king on the first rank. So you can just play rook captures on c2. So king e2 solves all of your problems none of none of black species can touch you so incredible but who would who would see this so instead after g6 duda played pawn to g3 he did create a square for his king but now mamidaro just drops the the other rook to the second rank rook d to d2 going after the f2 pawn rook captures on c3 now happily grabbing that pass pawn uh, but now rook to a2 attacks the queen and now queen to c1 is the final uh, attempt at saving the game after queen to b4 it's just very, very hard to, to play this, if not impossible. Bishop to d4 now, going after the f2 pawn. And now, again, it's uh, maybe you can save this, but through a, you know, a, a very long struggle, you would have to go into some terrible, terrible endgame. Some like king to f1 has to be played, then rook captures on f2 check. King e1, and now let's say rook f to b2, threatening rook to a1 check. So you have to play rook to b3 in order just to stay alive. Rook to a1 check, bishop to d1. Now look at this, bishop to f2 check, king f1, rook captures on d1, grabbing the bishop, king g2. Uh, and now bishop to c5 with check grabbing the queen. So rook captures on b2, bishop captures, rook captures, and you would get this position where Mamidar would be up a pawn. Uh, Duda would have a passed c pawn, but you still have to put a rook behind it, and it's just not going to be easy, like rook d2, rook to c2, and already Mamidar has a rook behind that pawn. So it's either winning or maybe Duda can save it with some perfect play. Uh, but uh, that's only if he finds king to f1. And he missed it once already. He misses it for the second time. He plays pawn to c5. Uh, but now uh, it's just game over. Bishop captures on f2 with check. King to f1 and now a nice rook to a1 with check. Now if you go to g2, uh, you go under the mask of the rook. So bishop captures on c5 with check. Just picks up the queen for nothing. So after rook to a1 check, rook to c1 was played. At least you will... Uh, force force the other rook to move. Uh, now rook captures on c1 with check king to g2 and now just a nice bishop to e1. 
uh, with check. Now you don't have bishop captures on c5 because of uh, queen captures on d2. But now bishop to e1 opens up a discovery. And he was in this position on move 34 that young Shishtov Duda resigned the game. And what a brilliant, brilliant victory for Mamedyarov giving up a queen for just a rook uh, and, a, and a pass pawn. But uh, you, you've seen the potential of the position. You've seen uh, what, what a great uh, a player like Mamedyarov can do. And uh, against another spectacular, a spectacular uh, player like Duda. Uh, in the knockouts of the Anxious Rapid, Duda faced uh, Vidit, he faced Magnus Carlsen, and he already played one full day of four games against Mamedyarov, uh, and he did not lose a single game. So that's how strong Duda is. And now Mamedyarov takes him down like this with the black pieces. Well, I mean, my, my, my day is going uh, very well. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this game, and yeah. Uh, here you resign because after king to h3, the very simple moving the rook away with tempo, rook captures on h2 check, will pick up white's queen, and that's it. Rook captures on h2, bishop captures on b4, and now you are up a full rook, uh, which is kind of funny because Mamidarov gave up a queen for a rook, and now he's up that full rook. So that could be that rook. I mean, very nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, br brilliant stuff by, by Duda uh, out preparing Mamedyarov like that with a bishop to f3 line. But what Mamedyarov did that, I mean, I, I have no words. Uh, so I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, Trevor Terris, uh, Laksaminari, and uh, Chakrapani, Alan Psycho, and Listerpan for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.